Hello, witch folk. Welcome to our coven. We are Angels on Broomsticks. We're a mother-daughter duo. I'm Kristen. And I'm Evangeline. And here on this channel, we see makeup as something that is fun, creative, definitely a little bit magical, and for everybody. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. What do we have today? So today is a very special day because we have in our hands the Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum Brush Collection. And how did we acquire that? <laughs> so we acquired it by surprise. I do every week the Katie Jane Hughes Academy. So she's a makeup artist on Instagram every week. She does a look. Everyone in the beauty community does that look too. And she picks some of her favorite looks and I won last week and surprise she gave away the brush set and I am so excited. Spectrum messaged me, asked for my address. It came so quick. It came by DHL. Yeah, not D not DSL, which I learned is Dick. Oh, that's Dick. Dick. Shh, shh, shh. DSL, DSL. It was DHL. <laughs> yeah. And it came so quick from the UK to Canada. And here we have this gorgeous brush set. It looks like painter's brushes, like something you'd see in a art store, which was definitely her intention. I love how it comes in this little box, comes with a lid and everything, which is great for traveling, great for makeup artists. Also comes with this microfiber cloth. It's already dirty because that's what it's supposed to do. You know, use in your brushes, clean them off, use them for multi, multi purposes. And yeah, so we're gonna be using quite a few of these brushes today, going in more tutorial style and showing mm -hmm. how we did these looks. Yeah, so if you want to see our first impressions on this brush set, see how we made these looks, keep on watching. How come you're taller than me now? Alrighty. So I've already primed with the e.l.f. Putty Primer and Charlotte Hollywood Filter, but I use my fingers with that. So I'm just going to go straight to foundation now. I'm just going to use the Auric. I'm going to do it right now in front of you and I use my fingers as well. So normally for foundation, I use like a super dense, like sort of flatter brush. There's nothing quite like that in this set. I know that Katie specifically likes a very light coverage doing more concealer. So I'm just gonna give it a try. I think I'm gonna use number two. It's sort of like a denser, almost blush type brush. But I know she's all about do what you want. Try all the brushes in all kinds of ways. You know? I as well, I'm gonna do a Katie Jane Hughes type of look where she just she builds up and goes mm -hmm. where needed mm -hmm. she doesn't like do it the way I do it so I'm gonna use this the number six <laughs> sorry yeah it is the number six yeah this is like a flat brush I'm gonna do it for the concealer I'm just gonna put a little bit on to start just where I need it I know where I need it yeah, this definitely gives a little bit of a lighter coverage because it's like fluffier, you know. Do you like a light coverage or do you like to just... Well, I do like a light coverage. Now that I'm older, when I was younger, I used to like like really opaque white look, you know? Yeah. But now I don't. Like, I don't think it looks really flattering on mature skin. Mm, okay. I'm gonna also use this for foundation. She always recommends this Makeup Forever Reboot. 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 <laughs> Reboot. And just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna go where I need it and blend it out. My nose is very red today. Yeah, that was nice. It's like it, it prevented things from like pilling up in a way, weird way, if that makes any sense. You know how that happens? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go in with, this is her favorite brush. It's number eight. There's two of these in the set, which is great because you can use it for a little bit of contour. You can use it for concealer. It's just like in between like a complexion brush and a shadow brush in a way. She would normally do her eyes first, I think though. Yeah, true. Am I right? We can't do that. It's against our principles. <laughs> Every time I do that, I'm so distracted by how everything else looks. I just, I, I can't enjoy the process of doing the shadow. Me too. It's me just too. horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem right. It's like painting a fence without filling in the holes first or something, you know? <laughs> like, 
Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me. I feel like Katie's always talking about just like using a lighter hand, which is something yeah. I need to bear in mind because sometimes I'm just like, oh. This is true. Especially with complexion. Yeah. She's such an artist. Yeah. All makeup artists do that. Like um, Robert Welsh, she's always like, just a gentle hand. He has his fingers like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. I love it. I'm also going to put this all over the eyelid. Concealer? Yeah, this is, I did a combination of the NARS Soft Matte and the NARS Creamy Radiant. I really like the Soft Matte for just around the whole eye area because, because it's matte. I find like mm. mascara doesn't smudge much with it. It's also great to go back in with this concealer after to sort of clean up. And I think this brush is really good for that as well. Just going back around things at the very end. Have you done your eyebrows? No, I'm gonna do my eyebrows. Did you do your eyebrows? I have not. I'm gonna do mine. I don't do much nowadays. My eyebrows are quite full. So I just fill in, there's just a part here where I just flick it. I like the, I'm now settled to marry hmm. Benefit. I've been flirting with a lot, but now I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> It's definitely something that you do. You find a product you really like, but you're like, ooh, maybe this one's better. And then you you go back to your OG. I've done that a lot. There's a really, really, really soft spoolie with this. No. But I don't want to like Let me ruin see. it. Where are you? I wouldn't touch a soft spoolie. This one, it's pretty oh soft. Oh my god. It's so nice. I think it'll be oh really my good god. for picking up little mascara flecks. Oh yes. I don't want to ruin that with all and my... And you need this for like, look at, it's got the very finest thing for like eyeliner. Yeah. I, I mean, that'll be for your eyebrows too. <gasps> I'm jealous. Yeah, it's nice. Some spoolies are so stiff and scratchy. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Katie Jane always says your tools are like, like your applicator is like your product almost. Like yeah. if you put your product into the brush, it just becomes like part of the whole process, right? Like, I understand that because I have like powder brushes that like maintain the powder in it. So yeah. sometimes I don't even have to. Yeah, you just dip powder. It in. Like I wanted an opportunity to show this one brush quickly, which is the number nine and it's the cleanup tool i know i'm gonna love this for cleaning up like liner moments and then sometimes when i'm really being perfectionist about my brows i like to clean up the edge with concealer eh, i'm probably not gonna do that yet but sometimes at the end i do that it's so dense it's so precise you can even put stuff in the water line with this brush Ooh! look at it yes it's it, the perfect oh my cleanup God, brush yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anything like no, this. No, me neither. It's a it's so unique. There's some unique little tools in this set yeah. for sure. Whoa, I need this. I'm using Tower 28, the Bronzino that I trash. I have a hate love relationship with this product. But Katie likes it. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this Fluffe. This one is a number four and it's got an angle, which I think is good. So when you do use an angle, I think generally you just gotta you don't go swoosh, swoosh. You go one way, one way. So I'm using the number eight again, that sort of like brush that can be used for everything. And I'm using this contour stick, cream contour. I'm kind of doing this thing I saw Lisa Elders do recently where you just really keep the pigment here and then bring it out a bit. What are we doing? Are we starting? Why up? don't you just go and do as you wish? Go ahead. As you wish. As you wish. I'm gonna do my eyes, but I've got all these kaleidos, guys. I got these back from somebody who borrowed them. <laughs> so I don't even know. I think I like this sashimi. It's one of the littler palettes and it's neutral. And I think it's really pretty. I'm gonna go in there. Generally I can actually get away with putting my eyeshadow on with one brush yeah I can do that oh so but God. I'm not gonna today I'm gonna use this, this one is the number 11 it's just a mid-size flat so soft fluffy it's not quite flat it's round but I think it'll be good to dip into my transition I'm just doing a very little nose contoury thing with this brush the number 12 it's almost like a flattened pencil brush in a way so it's really great for this kind of detail. 
Now I want to bronze with that fluffy, fluffy, fluffy brush. This blends so easily. So soft. It's the biggest brush. Just on top of the contour. So I'm just using the same uh, brush and I'm dipping into a little bit of a deeper shade uh, to make a little V at the ends of my eyes. You said you had a story. Oh, I have a story. I'm selling my house, guys. I have tenants and so my the scare that I had of my whole life is to tell them that I'm selling the house. Yeah. But they were fine. Yeah. The basement is full of stuff. So much stuff. So I saw yeah. them today. They're so sweet. They're so nice. They already did a whole big sweep. Wow, I'm so and the basement looks so good. And I gave the tenant my sewing machine. Oh, you nice. don't mind, do you? Yeah. You don't want to? No, it. I don't want it. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're so nice. But I, I was having a conversation with them about previous tenants I had. The funniest tenant experience was the couple that gave birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, gave it's almost like... in the house. They gave birth in the house. I know that's normal. But, I mean, I almost think that when you're selling your house, if there's, like, a grisly murder or something, you have to say something. I feel like... It, you know, I should actually say there was a birth. No, you should <laughs> Well, maybe it's a selling point. I don't think so. I think it is. Cool. It was a crazy day. It was like a February cold snap, and it was like they, the first time I ever heard the term polar vortex. We woke up to hear her screaming, screaming her head off, and she gave birth to a baby. And then she got a fridge. No, a freezer. And she put the giant freezer beside the furnace... This was like a freezer the size of your, like, an average fridge. And she stored her breast milk in there. Except she could barely pump anything. She only pumped, uh, like, one bottle. So there was a whole bottle and a whole giant freezer in there for months. Do you know how much my, uh, my hydro, hydro bill was? A lot. It was crazy. I bet. And they had so much stuff, and they left so much stuff behind. Oh, shit. So, like, when I went there... There's family portraits of really? people I don't know. Yes. Really? People I don't know. Like, there's so many things in there. So it's interesting, anyway. Yeah. And then, so then my realtor came. You know what he did? No. Got them flowers. No, he bought a laptop for a child in, in his ex-wife's class who needed a laptop. Oh, He bought a brand nice. new laptop. Isn't that not the cutest? It's good for Good. Kids need that now. Yeah. Like. Because he, he said, I want to learn, but I can't. Because wow. the, the school board was giving kids kind of broken, crappy laptops and that weren't working. Yeah. So he got him a wow. new one. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Yeah. It's a good sign of his character. Yeah. So if you need a realtor <laughs> in Toronto. So I've just done this wash of light, sort of bluey teal all over the lids using this 10 brush. It's nice because it has a bit of a point to it, like you can work sh shadow into the crease. I'm just sort of laying down this wash of color and I'm gonna do like a graphic, a dark blue graphic on top of it. I'll probably put some sparkles on here too. I'm using the Nomad palette, by the way, the Iceland one. Yeah, I'm gonna use this tinier brush, number 20. It's nice, it's nice and small, precise and stiff, and I'm gonna just kind of line my eyes with it in the deepest color I have in this palette. Okay, I'm just using my finger for the glitter just because it's just the easiest way to get glitter all over, you know? I'm doing the same. So I'm gonna use this dark blue and I'm gonna do a graphic line. Okay, I can't Ooh. wait for this. I'm worried. I'm nervous. Because they ha she has these very, very precise, precise brushes, which I'm probably going to use a setting spray with to like really solidify the point. There's the number 24, which is longer, so I think you can really create like a long line. And then this one, which is number 22. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit stiffer. I'm going to try both. We'll see. And use the setting spray as well to give it a bit of a liner texture. 
Tan, tan, tan. I can already tell that this brush is really great for, okay, you know when you put liner on and you're trying to get it like really, really close to the lash line and sometimes you just can't quite get it? With this being a bit wet and almost having like a little bit of a floppiness and give to it, it like settles down into that really close to the lash line. But you can do one eye and then the other eye on. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do the one eye. Because yeah. normally when I do liner, it's so great to anchor your elbow, which I don't have a place to anchor my elbow right now. So let's try this longer one. See how it works for doing like that line. Get the fix plus. Okay. So right now I'm not gonna use this super long one. I can tell that this is gonna be really fun to play with, but right now, just cause I can't anchor, I don't have control. So I'm gonna go back to this other one I was using, the number 22, just to get that upper line. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's the main sort of graphic moment happening. I'm going to do it on the other side, try and get it as even as possible, and be right back to finish up the look. Okay, so what I ended up doing was did the same thing on the other eye. I took this little pencil brush. It's the number 18. It's so perfect for getting in that inner corner. Put a little bit of purple there, and then I used number 15 for just a little bit of the blue on the lower lash line. It's so dense and it's just so perfect for that for that spot there. And then I have a little bit of a lash on and we're gonna finish up mm -hmm. the complexion. And I filed my income tax. <laughs> You're the one who told me to do a graphic guy. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna do my lipstick like Katie Jane does and she uses her lipstick as blush. I'm using, um, this one is called Velvet Beauty. Lisa Eldridge. Okay, I'm going to try, let's, I haven't used this one yet. Number five, it's an angled brush, and I'm going to use a cream blush with it from Nude Sticks. And just put it on the cheek, cheekbone. Again, with these angled brushes, like we mentioned, always just go in the same direction. Robert explains it well, because if you go sh sh back, like the product catches on this point, which is like the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing with it. So I'm just taking excess off my lips and putting them on my cheeks. Okay, highlighter. Oh, I wonder what brush I should use. I kind of dirty. We dirtied up a bunch. <laughs> Maybe I'll try this, like this one again, number eight, the one that's just perfect for all around. I'm going to go in with this Becca RIP Becca palette. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, Becca's going away. Yeah. Sads. This pinky highlight, why not? I'm surprised. Becca? Yeah. Me too. It all went downhill with that invisible foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody feels bad about trashing it. Okay, I'm going to go in with a liner, the Vive Liner in Bark. I'm going to define my lips with Endless Cacao. Tribute to Katie. And then Griselda from Fenty. Ugh, my lips are so chopped. This is bad. Okay, I find I love these lipsticks, the Mademoiselle by Fenty, but they really show texture on your lips. So if your lips are chapped, it's not the best formula. And mine are very chapped. We're almost done winter though. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna use the Vive liner just mm -hmm. to kind of fill out the weird gaps of chappedness. So fun. Now I'm going to just use what my foundation brush was and just kind of clean up around everything. Yeah, me too. Polish. Doing exactly, doing exactly that. So that's it. Classic, classic Katie Jane Hughes hand. If your hand doesn't look like this at the end of your makeup look, then what were you doing? Mm. <laughs> I love these liner brushes. I've actually never had Brush is so skinny and thin, and I've often wondered how people do like those really graphic lines that are so pointy. 
We talked about that on one episode. Yeah, that looks really good. This is just kind of a quick look. I've done this shape before, but I'm really excited to try some new graphic moments with these brushes and get to know them. What are your first impressions? Yes, I'm excited to see your graphic looks. I love these brushes. They're so soft and just so precise. Like, mm -hmm. they're really nicely shaped. Yeah, I love them. I'm jelly. <laughs> I don't have them yet. Yeah, so she's definitely <laughs> going to be re-releasing them. When did she say? Sometime in the spring for sure. And she said something about having smaller kits as well. So if you only need a couple yeah, brushes. Yeah, I'd probably get a small kit for me. So yeah, that's our looks for today. Definitely check out Katie Jane Hughes Instagram if you don't follow her already. I'm sure most of you do though. All right, so we'll see you on Thursday for our witches, bitches, martinis, and makeup sessions. Don't know what we're talking about yet, but we're going to figure it out. Until then, bye, witches! Bye. <laughs>